she's so beautiful <laughs> and so big. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 20 actors and actresses who grew up in front of the camera. Hello, artists. May I present myself as an actor, a musician, and a loyal and very humble. For this list, we'll be looking at actors and actresses who got early starts in their careers. Who's your favourite lifelong star? Let us know in the comments below. Number 20. Christina Ricci Christina Ricci's career started early and with a bang. Her very first film role had her co-starring with Cher and Winona Ryder in the 1990 movie Mermaids when she was 10. She's going to kill you if you put those on. Go back to your rocks, Kate. Okay. A year later, she won over audiences as the belovedly odd Wednesday Addams in The Addams Family, a true inspiration for strange little girls everywhere. In 1993, she came back for the sequel. You sent us to camp. They made us sing. She starred in several films over the course of the rest of her adolescence, including some provocative roles for a teenager, like Ang Lee's The Ice Storm and Don Rue's The Opposites of Sex. Ricci made a name for herself as a child actor with these dark parts and continued to find success today. If you think I'm just plucky and scrappy and all I need is love, you're in over your head. I don't have a heart of gold and I don't grow one later, okay? Number 19. Maisie Williams you know the first thing about sword fighting? Sticking with the pointy end. <laughs> Best known for portraying the beloved Arya Stark on Game of Thrones, Maisie Williams spent the entirety of her adolescence on screen. She landed the role of Arya when she was 12 and grew up as millions of people watched as Arya also grew up to become a full-blown assassin. When people ask you what happened here, tell them the North remembers. Tell them Winter came for House Frey. Williams's Game of Thrones audition was her second ever, and the role was her first professional acting job. She quickly became a fan favourite as her portrayal of the young Stark won over audiences. Her work on the show earned her tons of accolades, including an Emmy nomination in 2016. Number 18. Raven Simone. In 1989, Raven got her start on The Cosby Show, playing Olivia Kendall, starting when she was just four years old. That was for old people. I'm young and I'm up. Her career continued with Hanging with Mr. Cooper, which she starred in between 1993 until 1997. She also had a bunch of film credits while growing up, including Dr. Doolittle. The Little Rascals, and Xenon, Girl of the 21st Century. Nebula! According to Xenon, you're the true winner, mate. Just why don't you come on up there? Come on! She's probably best known and loved for her roles as teenage psychic Raven Baxter on Disney Channel's That's So Raven and singer Galleria in Disney's The Cheetah Girls, both of which she released during the year Raven would turn 18 in 2003. Raven's iconic comedy roles throughout her early career have earned her many awards and accolades and a reputation as one of the greatest childhood and teenage stars. You're gonna be juggling the hottest producers, Rodney Jerkins, <laughs> Babyface Jackal Jones. Oh yeah, and all the hot designers are calling us. They're like, oh, sorry, Dolce, I got Gabbana on the other line. Uh, please hold on, Chuchi, it's Gucci, get time for it. Number 17, Anna Paquin. Anna Paquin is the second youngest Academy Award winner, nabbing the award for the Best Supporting Actress for the Piano in 1993 when she was just 11. Hi. I want to be in the photograph. After that accomplishment, Paquin took a short break from major acting projects and returned to play young Jane in 1996's Jane Eyre. She also starred in Fly Away Home that same year, earning Paquin Young Artist and Young Star Award nominations. Dad, look! They're really flying with me! Woo! As a teen, Paquin appeared in comedies like She's All That and Almost Famous, and dramas like A Walk on the Moon, proving her wide acting range all before reaching adulthood. She'd go on to star in True Blood, where she met her husband, Stephen Moyer. They are staring at us because I am a vampire. And you are 
are mortal. <sighs> oh, who cares what they think? Number 16, Kristen Stewart. Speaking of blood and vampires, Kristen Stewart didn't become a household name until after the 2008 release of Twilight, when she gained seemingly overnight fame as Bella Swan. So the lion fell in love with the lamb. What a stupid lamb. But Stewart had been acting for years prior to her Twilight days. Starting to act professionally when she was eight, Stewart shared the screen with Jodie Foster in Panic Room, so she was just 12 when she had her first major breakout role. Come here. It's disgusting how much I love you. Tell me about it. Throughout her teenage years, she appeared in several more films like Zathura, Into the Wild, and even played a preteen thief in the kids heist movie Catch That Kid. Stuart actually turned 18 on the Twilight set, meaning Stuart literally transitioned from childhood to adulthood on camera. I think 18 is a little young to start worrying about that. It's one year older than you. No, it isn't. I'm 109. Well, maybe I shouldn't be dating such an old man. Number 15, Hilary Duff. Best known for her role as Lizzie McGuire, Hilary Duff is a Disney darling who grew up on camera. <laughs> Lizzie, all right. Hey, there you are. We've been looking for you. That was a banging show. I, you really looked cool up there. Thanks. She got her first big role in show business at the age of 10 in Casper Meets Wendy, where she played a good little witch who became friends with the iconic Friendly Ghost. Soon after came her Lizzie McGuire run, which ended with the Disney Channel original movie of the same name. After that, Duff became a familiar face in teen movies, including Cadet Kelly, Agent Cody Banks, The Cheaper by the Dozen movies, and A Cinderella Story, all before she turned 18. And the tap we ever acted. At least for now. Hey, I'm only a freshman. Number 14, Christian Bale. Christian Bale was a prolific and well-respected actor long before he was Batman. Bale decided to pursue acting when he was 10 and quickly landed his breakout role in Steven Spielberg's Empire of the Sun at 13. Some of his subsequent notable movies include Henry V, Treasure Island, and Newsies. We've come a long way, yeah. but we ain't there yet, and maybe it's only gonna get tougher from now on. But that's fine, we'll just get tougher with it. Yeah. He also played Laurie in 1994's Little Women, across from Winona Ryder's Joe March. Having forged a name for himself, Bale would go on to star in mega hits like American Psycho and, of course, Christopher Nolan's Batman trilogy. It's not who I am underneath, but what I do that defines me. He won the Academy Award for his role in 2010's The Fighter, and Time magazine called him one of the 100 most influential people in the world in 2011. Not bad for a child star. I since the moment I clapped eyes on you. Number 13, Lindsay Lohan. Lindsay Lohan first became well-known for her roles in multiple Disney movies, starting with The Parent Trap. She played both the roles of Hallie and Annie, identical twins, separated as babies, and reunited at summer camp. Hi, Mare. Hello. How you doing? Lohan won a Young Artist Award for her breakout performance, a well-deserved accolade considering her British accent in the film. She went on to star in other Disney movies like Life Size, Get a Clue, and Freaky Friday. Give us the dirty details. Excuse me? Did you make a movie? Is that something I would do? Lohan didn't star in the fan favorite Mean Girls until she was 17, but by that point, she had already achieved bona fide teen idol status. So what are we doing this weekend? Yeah, what are we doing? Oh, I have to go to Madison with my parents. What? We have tickets for this thing. What? what? Was I the new Queen Bee? Number 12, Natalie Portman. Natalie Portman's debut role was a young orphan who befriends a hitman in Luc Besson's Leon, the professional. She was 12 when she booked the gig. You still have your gun. Use it. Just do me a favor. Don't shoot out the window, okay? Why are you so mean to me? She had a few movie roles during her adolescence, but she reportedly turned down a lot of parts because of their sexualized nature. Her first real big budget project was the Star Wars prequels. She played Padme Amidala, Luke and Leia's mum. 
She attended school throughout her career and skipped the Star Wars premiere to study for exams. During the same year she graduated, the comedy drama Anywhere But Here was released. In it, she starred alongside Susan Sarandon, and her performance earned her a Golden Globe nomination. She took a few years off from acting to attend Harvard, but her reputation from growing up on screen allowed her a quick comeback. You call this a diplomatic solution? No, I call it aggressive negotiations. Number 11, Jason Bateman. What comes before anything? What have we always said is the most important thing? Though many people remember him best for his role as Michael Bluth in Arrested Development, Jason Bateman got his start in the early 80s as orphan James Cooper in Little House on the Prairie, with his first episode airing when he was just 12. Sandra, I meant what I said to Miss Triangles. You and me will always be together. He also appeared in the television show Silver Spoons from 1982 to 1984. By the mid-80s, he was a well-known teen star thanks to his role as David Hogan on The Hogan Family sitcom. He also directed a few episodes of the show when he was 18, becoming the youngest ever director in the Directors Guild of America. All that to say that Jason Bateman definitely grew up in front of the camera and even spent some time behind it. <laughs> some nerds have all the luck. Number 10, Brooke Shields. Brooke Shields started off as a child model but quickly proved her acting chops at the age of 12 in Pretty Baby, playing the daughter of a sex worker, played by Susan Sarandon. Do I ask you questions? I don't have to explain myself to a child. I'm not a child. Excuse me, that is your opinion. She went on to star in The Blue Lagoon and Endless Love in the early 80s as a young teenager. Both movies were met with a ton of controversy thanks to Shields' young age and several risque scenes. I will not have this family torn apart! David cannot stay here! Yes, he can! It is my room! We are not a couple of little kids! Her modeling work also proved to be pretty controversial. In her mid-teens, she continued to build on her provocative image when she appeared in the iconic Calvin Klein jeans ad. You want to know what comes between me and my Calvins? Nothing. Though she briefly took a break from her career to attend Princeton, Shields had already achieved legendary status by then. Number 9. Zendaya Well, are you ready to do this? No! Aren't you the least bit nervous? Zendaya got her start on the Disney Channel, initially appearing as Rocky Blue in the series Shake It Up, which premiered in 2010 when she was 14. Her first film role was also a Disney Channel production, 2012's Frenemies. That same year, she made Dancing with the Stars history, becoming the youngest contestant the show ever had, though her record was broken a few years later. You made every single dance special, yeah. that Zendaya Val special flavor, and it's been a joy. <laughs> Following her dancing stint, Zendaya went on to produce and star in Disney Channel's Casey Undercover. She since graduated into another Disney franchise, playing MJ in the Tom Holland Spider-Man movies. Wait, you're, you're being serious right now? Mm-hmm. You're not joking with me? Like, you're 100% serious because it's not funny? No, I'm not joking. Number 8. Cole Sprouse Cole Sprouse got his start in acting alongside his twin brother Dylan as they split the roles of Patrick Kelly on the ABC show Grace Under Fire when they were babies and Julian in Big Daddy when they were a bit older. Cole's first role that he didn't share with his brother was Ross Geller's son, Ben on Friends. Do you remember all that stuff I taught you yesterday? Remember all that stuff I taught you yesterday? <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. Seriously, your dad doesn't like pranks. Seriously, your dad doesn't like pranks. Oh, damn it! Oh, damn it! No, don't say that! Together, Dylan and Cole also held the titular roles in Disney Channel's The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody and its spin-off, The Sweet Life on Deck. What am I gonna do without you? Don't worry, I've prepared six months of casseroles. They're in the freezer. Make it 3.50 for 45 minutes. Though his twin subsequently took on less acting roles in favor of other pursuits, Cole Sprouse continued his acting career with the role of Jughead on the CW's Riverdale. In case you haven't noticed, I'm weird. I'm a weirdo. I don't fit in, and I don't want to fit in. Have you ever seen me without this stupid hat on? That's weird. Number 7. Leonardo DiCaprio It seems that Leonardo DiCaprio has been acting forever, and he kind of has. 
After a few commercials in the 80s, he got his start on television in the early 90s, appearing in shows like Growing Pains. That was great! Do that again! Okay, okay, okay. This is amazing! This is great! This is incredible! This nabbed him his first acting accolade, a nomination for a Young Artist Award. He had some small movie roles until he got his big film break in This Boy's Life, alongside Robert De Niro in 1993. I got this scholarship and you went nuts! He's crazy and I'm leaving! Ready, go! Finally, about time, about time! Go! No, 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 don't worry, I'm gone! The same year, he starred in What's Eating Gilbert Grape, which got him his first Academy Award and Golden Globe nominations. Leo was only 19, making him one of the youngest nominees. Since then, he has given too many breathtaking performances to count, gathering lots of Oscar nominations for roles that matured over time with the actor himself. He finally took home the prize for The Revenant in 2016. Number 6. Jodie Foster Jodie Foster started appearing in commercials between the ages of two and three years old and hasn't really slowed down since. She appeared in lots of TV shows and movies during her childhood in the 60s and 70s and most notably starred alongside Robert De Niro in Taxi Driver when she was just 12 years old. I think I understand. Uh, I tried to get into your cab one night and you want to come and take me away. Is that it? Yeah, but don't, don't you want to go? The role got her a nomination for Best Supporting Actress at the Academy Awards. That same year, she also starred in the original Freaky Friday. I'm not the same person today. So I've noticed. But you know you have to snap out of it. This is a real important game. I'll try. But I mean it. Literally, I'm not the same person. Foster is widely considered to be one of the most talented actors of her generation and has the accolades to show it, so she definitely deserves her spot here. It's nice to know you care, my darling. It's nice to know I do. And believe me, I do. Oh. Number 5. Macaulay Culkin Although he's best known for playing Kevin McAllister in Home Alone, Macaulay Culkin started acting at four, mostly in small roles. He got his first big break in 1988, Rocket Gibraltar, and went on to star in John Hughes' Uncle Buck in 89. Do I have an uncle? Unfortunately. Ooh. Holy smokes. He's cooking our garbage. In 1990, Hughes and Culkin reunited for the majorly successful Home Alone. The role required quite the performance from Culkin, as his character Kevin is often on screen, you guessed it, alone. I made my family disappear. His performance nabbed him a Golden Globe nomination, an American Comedy Award, and a Young Artist Award. He also starred in My Girl and Home Alone 2. Eventually, his child star days came to an end. After over a dozen movies and 1994's Richie Rich, he temporarily retired from acting to go to high school after. We should be having fun. Money is fun. All I'm saying is, I'm wondering if you guys can come over this weekend, you know, hang out. Hang out? Yeah, like normal kids. Number 4. Dakota Fanning First winning over audiences at seven years old with her appearance in I Am Sam, Dakota Fanning was a prolific child actor. I have Oreo ice cream mud pie. This is so great. Yeah, this is so great. The particular role earned her a SAG nomination, which makes her the youngest ever SAG nominee. She didn't win, but she stole the show in a ton of popular films, including Uptown Girls, The Cat in the Hat, and Charlotte's Web. Alongside films, she appeared in a bunch of TV shows like CSI and Friends. As she grew up, so did the role she took. Go ahead, my dear. This may hurt just a little. She played the scary vampire Jane in the Twilight Saga, rockstar Cherie Curry in The Runaways, and even voiced Coraline. Fanning is perhaps one of the best recognized and praised child stars of her generation, earning her this slot. Why does she want me? She wants something to love, I think. Something that isn't her. Number 3. Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen the Olsen twins quite literally grew up in front of the camera, starting on Full House when they were just nine months old as the youngest daughter, Michelle Tanner. 
The last movie they did together, New York Minute, was released in 2004, just before the girls turned 18. <laughs> Take some oh of that. Are you, are you trying to kill us? In between, they started a plethora of movies and TV shows, including Billboard Dad, Passport to Paris, and Winning London, to name just a few. Haven't we seen enough museums? Yes. Enough monuments? Yes. Enough? Yes. Well, then what are we doing? Shopping. If we tried to name every Olsen twins movie and TV show, we'd be here for a while. There were few, if any, years of their childhood that went by without a new release from the Olsen twins. She would have been really proud. Both of us. Number two, Harry Potter's main three. Holy cricket, you're Harry Potter. I'm Hermione Granger, and you are? Um, Ron Weasley. Pleasure. Many fans of the Harry Potter series got to grow up alongside the stars of the film, who themselves grew up before our very eyes over the course of a decade. Over the course of eight movies, franchise star Daniel Radcliffe, Rupert Grint and Emma Watson aged at about the same rate as their characters, Harry, Ron and Hermione. Why is it when something happens, it is always you three? Believe me, Professor, I've been asking myself the same question for six years. The lead cast were all between the ages of 11 and 13 when the first movie was released. By the time the final movie was finished, Daniel, Rupert and Emma were all adults and had starred in a Harry Potter movie for almost every year between 2001 and 2011. Quite productive childhoods, we think. I think we'll ever just have a quiet year at Hogwarts. No. no. Well, I don't think so. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Drew Barrymore While she appeared in a dog food ad and had a small part in sci-fi horror flick, Drew Barrymore had her childhood acting breakthrough in E.T. The Extraterrestrial at age 6. She continued to act throughout her childhood in the 80s, even serving as Saturday Night Live's youngest host ever at age 7. What? Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm Drew Barrymore. She got her first Golden Globe nomination for her supporting role in 1994's Irreconcilable Differences, which was released when she was 9. In her teenage years, she took on mature, dark roles. At 17, she was nominated for her second Golden Globe for her starring role in Gun Crazy. Two Golden Globe noms before adulthood. Oh my god, that's not bad. Well, you got a future if you start doing a mass murder business. Well, I don't think I'll be doing that. Drew Barrymore not only grew up in front of the camera, but also truly excelled at acting. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.